hvor man ved ligesom at klarlægge, hvordan hele det her system hang sammen. Og man var ikke sikker på, hvilket sprog, der hørte ind under hvad og hvordan, altså, hvordan det hele hang sammen. Og man havde ikke det her overblik med, at der har været et indeuropæisk modersprog. Skrift, håndskrift, som øh, indeholder bønder øh, for den saratustiske religion. Og den har Rasmus Ras købt i Nordindien i omkring 1826. Den har været udsat for, for et lille forlis, øh, da Rasmus Ras skulle forlade. He, what he wanted to do was to survey all the major languages that he could, and so he received some uh, grant money from, from the king at the time to travel throughout Europe and into India doing this descriptive process of languages. And so he started his journey, went through Europe uh, and described the languages of Northern Europe and I think even into the Balkans. And then he went over into India and um, started describing the Indian languages. In particular, he was interested in Sanskrit. And during his journey, he traveled from Bombay inland over the rivers and uh, land routes up to Benares and up to the, the Danish colony of Sirampur was sick all the way along. Uh, and then um, from Sirampur he took a boat, was very sick, uh, was barely alive at the time, but recovered on his way on the boat trip from Sirampur down to Trankabar, which was the major settlement at the time. And we're talking the middle of the uh, 1800s, 1850s, around that time. And all during this time, he was collecting and describing language, the language he encountered. Not only Sanskrit, but the regional languages that he came in contact with. Developed quickly a fluency in the language so he could communicate with the people and also learn the literature that the languages were written in. Uh, one of his tasks was, of course, I said Sanskrit, And during, the t during his time in India, he collected manuscripts and uh, brought these manuscripts back with him when he came uh, from his journey in India. And they're now deposited in the Royal Library. And constitute, that constituted one of the first collection of Indian manuscripts, primary source materials that we have here in Europe, in the Western world. There is also a, a very interesting uh, 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 work he produced, and uh, it was a descriptive grammar of Sanskrit, one of the earliest descriptive grammars of the language that's available. Unfortunately, he never published it, and it's still in manuscript form in the library, in the Royal Library. Um, when he traveled from Trankabar, he was coming back to Denmark, and he made a stop in Sri Lanka, at that time Ceylon, and proceeded to describe the language of Sinhala and collect manuscripts that were written in Pali, which is the oldest language of the Buddhist scriptures, which is related to Sanskrit. It's a kind of a vernacular uh, language close to Sanskrit and collected the earliest palm leaf manuscripts of that language, of the Buddhist scriptures, and brought those back also with his collection of manuscripts to the Royal Library. He, these became the basis for the early studies of the Pali language and subsequent translations of the early Buddhist scriptures in Pali, and the ongoing project here in Copenhagen of the Critical Pali Dictionary, 
which is a world-renowned project which has now, now ceased but began in the 1920s and continued over many, many years, which was uh, directly a result of Rasmus Rask's work. So in a way, he set the whole structure and tone for the study of ancient languages here in Copenhagen, in particular those languages of ancient India. So he was uh, quite instrumental, both in Europe and specifically in Denmark, for bringing Sanskrit in Indian culture alive through its language. En parallel tekst, altså en buddhistisk, ja, en buddhistisk øh, tekst, skrevet, som er på parallel. Men selve bogstaverne, som er skrevet ned, er singalesiske. Those texts, uh, uh, of which Sanskrit is the language, these became the basis for study. Uh, previous to that, there were very few texts that, st that students could study the language from. And his collection became a central basis, a central source for studying the language and of course learning more about it and developing a whole study of Indology and Sanskrit studies in Copenhagen. So it was one, one of the earliest centers. Um, Sanskrit was first taught in, in Copenhagen uh, in about 18, I think it was 1850s, early 1850s. So it was right around the time of Rasmus Rask where the language was first taught here at the university and has been continuously taught at the University of Copenhagen since that time with a few breaks along the way. but. It still continues as a as a discipline study at the university. One of the few still in Europe where this where students can learn Sanskrit at the very early stages of their education.